Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it will whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to talk about proofing or more specifically about diluting and fortifying a spirit. Then I'll talk a bit about obscuration and how it's typically solved. So let's get started. Proofing can be both a very simple and a very complicated subject. I'm going to show you a bunch of ways to figure out how much of X you need to add to Y in order to get to Z. To go both up in ABV and down in ABV. I'll start with going down or diluting and follow it up with going up or fortifying. So let's talk a little bit about dilution. Dilution is the act of lowering the concentration of a solute in a solution by adding more solvent. In this case the solute is ethanol and the solution is the spirit. You can use any number of things to dilute a spirit as long as it dissolves into the solution. Most people will simply use water or another less concentrated alcoholic beverage. Generally there are three ways to go about calculating dilution. Then there's just the manual way of doing it. So the first is the simple volume dilution equation. C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. After that there's the simple mass dilution equation, although it requires a lookup table to convert some values, but it is just C1 times M1 equals C1 time, or C2 times M2. Then there's a method using what's called a Pearson square. It can work with both volume and mass. And then the fourth is just the manual way, essentially just adding water or a lower proof spirit to your original spirit until you get the reading you want with your hydrometer or refractometer. For all the examples I'm going to be doing or anything related to volume, you can just assume I'm doing it at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's talk about the simple volume dilution equation first. So here you go, C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. What does this mean? Well, C1 is your initial concentration. V1 is your initial volume. C2 is the final concentration. And V2 is the final volume. So assuming we have a 2 liter spirit at 62% and we want to dilute it down to 40%, what's our final volume going to be and how much do we need to add? So 62% times 2 liters equals 40% times X. Divide both sides by 40%. X equals 3.1 liters. So our final volume is going to be 3.1 liters at 40%. Subtract the original volume from that and we know we have to add 1.1 liters of water to get a spirit at 40%. And then in US customary units, 62% times 1 gallon equals 40% times X. Divide both sides by 40%. X equals 1.55 gallons. So subtracting from the original, we need to add 0.55 gallons of water in order to get a 1.55 gallon 40% spirit. Pretty easy. This is a very simple way to dilute. But this is where the complicated part comes in. It doesn't take into account that water and ethanol undergo significant hydrogen bonding and thus their mixed volume isn't the same as the sum of their volume. Adding 500 milliliters of water to 500 milliliters of ethanol doesn't give you 1,000 milliliters of 50% ABV solution. So 500 milliliters of H2O plus 500 milliliters of ethanol does not equal 1,000 milliliters at 50%. It'll actually be, I don't know what the exact value is, it would be something like 980 milliliters at 53%. So due to the hydrogen bonding, the molecules of water, here let me get, let me use these, the molecules of water and the molecules of ethanol sit closer together than two molecules of water do or two molecules of ethanol do. Then to make things harder for us, the distance that the water and ethanol molecules sit from each other depends on the concentration of the ethanol. It's a non-linear relationship that can't be easily calculated. And if you're interested in learning more on this topic, you can look into the property called partial molar volumes. It is a very deep rabbit hole. This is one of those chemistry and physics topics that people spend their careers trying to solve. But I'll do a quick example to show you how weird it is. Okay, so here's the quick example. Let's say we have one liter at 
50% ABV has a density of 929.1 grams per milliliter. And to convert it to alcohol by weight, it's 42.42%. How do I know these values? Uh, I have a table created by the Canadian government that shows the densities, volumes, and masses at 20 degrees Celsius. I'll talk about it a bit more later, but the link is in the description. So since we have one liter of it, that means there's 929.1 grams of total solution and 42.42% of it is ethanol. That gives us 394.1 grams of ethanol and 535 grams of water. So the density of ethanol at 20 degrees Celsius and the density of H2O at 20 degrees Celsius are 0.7894 grams per milliliter and 0.9982 grams per milliliter, respectively. If we turn these masses back into volumes by dividing by those densities, we have 499.2 milliliters of ethanol and 536 milliliters of water. If we sum these two values together, we get 1035.2 milliliters of solution. But if you actually mix these two together, you get 1000 milliliters at 50% ABV. This is where that partial molar volumes comes into play. Realistically speaking, the amount of error you will typically see from mixing volumes using the, the simple volume dilution equation typically be fall in between zero and three percent. Not a huge issue for hobbyists, but it's why professional distilleries absolutely do not use this method. For us hobbyists, it's more than close enough most of the time. So let's take a look at the uh, simple mass dilution equation now. Okay, so the simple mass dilution equation should look very familiar. C1 times M1 equals C2 times M2. Really is that simple. The issue here though is that you need to convert from volume to mass. To do that, you need to know the density of the liquid to a rather high degree at the temperature you're working with. So if you're a professional distillery, you'll need one of the following setups. You'll need a digital density meter, like something from Anton Pyre. You could go with a pinkometer and a scale. The scale needs to be accurate, at least with these small volumes, to around 10 micrograms. With larger volumes, typically you'll need about an accuracy of three decimal places. But for us hobbyists, we can just use an alcoholometer or a specific gravity hydrometer to get the best ABV proof or specific gravity reading we can get. And remember that specific gravity is the same value as density in the units of grams per milliliter. So then we can go over to a table like the one I've linked to in the description and that I mentioned previously, which is the 1996 Canadian Alcoholometric Laboratory Table. It's a simple list with three columns as density, volume, and mass. And it's all at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, as mentioned previously. You can then convert your the ABV or proof value you got or the SG reading to mass. So let's just say we start with one liter at 90% ABV. That's a specific gravity of 0.8281, which is density of 828.1 grams per milliliter. Using the table, that means we have 85.67% ABW. So yeah, this is the alcohol by weight, or you could call it the mass fraction of ethanol in the original solution. So that means at one liter of liquid at 20 degrees Celsius, we have 828.1 grams of total solution and 709.4 grams of that is ethanol. And let's say we want to dilute that down to 50% ABV, which is equal to 42.42% ABW. Again, we come back to the equation and it's pretty simple. Original concentration, original mass, final concentration, and then our unknown is the final mass, 85.67 percent times 828.1 grams equals 42.42 percent times x. Divide both sides by 42.42 percent and x equals 1672 grams. Subtract the original and that means we need to add 843.9 grams of water. In metric this is easy enough this would be 843.9 grams or sorry milliliters of water. And then just to sort of back check our math we have our final volume or our final mass if we check what 42.42 percent of that is we get 709.3 grams and that's roughly how much ethanol we had in the original so the amount of ethanol hasn't changed we've just increased the solvent um i imagine the discrepancy is due to rounding errors but yeah this is a method that even professional distilleries can use they just have to be more diligent in how they get that density value than hobbyists. So now we can look at Pearson's squares. 
Okay, so many of you may have not have heard of Pearson Square before. Some of you might have though. A Pearson Square is just a way to visually lay out the math. You can use volume or mass. Using volume will introduce error, the partial molar volume issue. Again, at most it'll be 3%. If you want a more accurate number, then you use mass instead. But uh, here's how it goes. So you have five values. You have the ABV of the thing you're adding, the ABV of the spirit, as it is now, the desired ABV of the spirit, and then you have parts additive and parts spirit. So let's say we're starting with uh, a spirit at 70% ABV and our additive is just going to be water, so 0% ABV, and our desired ABV is going to be 50%. So here's what the square looks like. We have our five numbers A, B, C, D, E, and here's how you use it. So to get the value for D, you do 70 minus 50. That gives you this value. To get the value for E, you do 50 minus well, essentially you're doing the larger number minus the smaller number because you don't want a negative value. For D, or in this case X, 70% minus 20% equals 20 parts, because remember D is parts of added. And then E, or Y, parts of spirit, 50% minus 0% equals 50 parts. And that's total 20 parts. So you could just do two parts of water to your five parts of spirit. But if you want to know percentages and actual volumes, 20 parts divided by the total 70 parts gives you 28.5%, 28.57% additive. 50 divided, 50 parts divided by 70 parts gives you 71.43% spirit. So if you want to make a one liter of it, you'll have 714.3 milliliters of spirit and 285.7 milliliters of water. It's actually pretty easy to do. So why did I bother teaching you the Pearson squares when we could have just used a simple dilution formula? Well the thing about the dilution formulas is they can only be used for dilution so they can only only be used to bring the concentration down. If you try to go from a lower concentration to a higher concentration you start getting weird numbers that don't make sense. But the Pearson square though you can use it to go both up and down. So this is a dilution right here. Let's talk a bit about fortifying and use a Pearson square to solve an example. Okay so here we go fortifying using Pearson square. So this time our spirit is going to be 40% ABV. Our additive is going to be 95% ABV, so like a neutral grain spirit. And we want our desired ABV to be 50%. So let's just say we made something and it wasn't high enough, or maybe we accidentally added too much water and we want to go back up. Our additive ABV, our original spirit ABV, and then our desired ABV. 50 minus 40 gives us 10, 10 parts. 95 minus 50, gives us 45 parts, so 55 parts total. Divide to find out how much of the additive we need. So 18.18%, one, one I should have wrote that in, additive, and then 45 divided by 55 gives us 81.82% spirit. So if we wanted one liter of this, we'd have 818.2 milliliters of 40% and 181.8 milliliters of 95%, and that would give us one liter at 50% ABV. Now again, I keep stressing this, but you're not going to get exactly one liter at 50% because that volume is going to contract a bit. Probably be somewhere between 960 milliliters and 980 milliliters. Since the volume has gone down, the concentration has gone up a bit, so it might be between 50 and 53%. If you want the more accurate number, again, you should use masses and not volume. Lastly, diluting and fortifying thing I wanted to discuss is just the manual method. You know, you put your spirit in a vessel, put a hydrometer in there with it, and you start adding water or a higher proof spirit. Now, there are issues with doing it this way too, because adding water or ethanol to your spirit will cause it to heat up. Essentially, as new hydrogen bonds are created, energy is released, and that energy takes the form of heat. So you'll need to add some, wait for the temperature to stabilize, and repeat until you get to the desired ABV. You can always do a quick dilution calculation using the simple dilution uh, formulas, then only add maybe 10% of that volume, then wait for the temperature to come back to normal, then you can add in the last little bit slowly and should have a much, much more accurate number doing it that way. The last thing I want to talk about is obscuration. Okay, so obscuration. This is the property whereby a solute other than ethanol is being added, altering the density and thereby obscuring or making hidden the true density 
of the water ethanol mixture. So you won't know the ABV proof or specific gravity. So you can't easily measure the ABV proof with, you know, a hydrometer. So a hydrometer won't work. Your multi-thousand dollar digital density meter won't work. And your pinkometer and scale won't work because they all measure density. And whatever you're adding, like say you're adding sugar, is altering the density so you don't know what the density of just the water and ethanol is. You only have two options really to find out what the true ABV or proof value is going to be. Take a small portion and you read distill a sample of it. You could buy a small glass lab setup off like eBay or something and just read distill a small sample of it and then you measure that using any of these things. The other option, if you have the money or you're willing to send it out, is you could uh, have someone do an analysis using gas chromatography, ion chromatography, or high pressure liquid chromatography. These would give you quick answers to the ABV of it, regardless of what else is in there. And uh, yeah, that's it for proofing. Uh, I hope you've learned something. Please click like and subscribe if you want to see more. And before I finish, I'd also like to mention that the Patreon page is up and I also have a, what's the name of the website? Teespring merch website set up as well. Links for both of those are down in the description as well, as is that uh, mass volume table that I was talking about. Have a great week.